Police officers recorded girls wandering alone in the early hours of the morning. When they saw her face, they discovered something alarming. As a young girl to whom life had not lent the best opportunities, she remembered that at some point in her childhood she'd wanted to be an actress. But all those childhood dreams had soon been buried. She'd become addicted as a child to escape hunger, and because it was the only thing she knew, in her innocence she even believed that this was the only way to get closer to her parents, who, addicts themselves, were the only example they set for her. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. It hadn't been her fault. Her addiction had been created since childhood by the carelessness and irresponsibility of her parents. But Joanna suffered from dependency all her life, and drugs would eventually take everything away from her. At the age of 17, completely unprepared, Joanna had a baby girl, and at that moment, she felt that she had reached a new impulse to be sober for good. Although it had never occurred to her that she would be a mother so young, she felt that life was giving her a new opportunity to be different from what her parents had taught her. Joanna was hopeful. Deep in her heart, she wanted it. She wanted to have a normal life with her little Lucy, to see her grow up and work hard to give her everything she needed. She dreamed of seeing her face of satisfaction on every birthday, of raising her to be a great woman, to do everything she had not been able to do. That she would study, that she would truly fall in love, that she would have the means to do whatever her heart desired. Joanna really wanted all that, but the environment she was living in did not help. Joanna had never struggled so hard to get sober, but she always relapsed. She'd gotten a decent job that had allowed her to stop living in her mother's basement, who didn't even pay attention to them and get a small apartment that was just for the two of them. But being alone didn't help either, and the relapses were getting harder and harder. While she was at the bottom of the abyss, Lucy, who was barely a year old, suffered the consequences of neglect because her mother forgot to feed her and take care of her. Then when she came to, she would feed her to bursting and try to make up for all the neglect of the previous days. And so the girl's life was an emotional roller coaster in which she went from the deepest sadness to euphoria to repeat the cycle with each of her mother's relapses. Little by little, Joanna was running out of strength to fight. She found it harder and harder to pull herself out of the depths of her addiction, and one day she no longer came out. She had overdosed just the day after her daughter's birthday and didn't even manage to leave anything safe for her. Lucy had been left alone, but at her age she didn't understand why her mom didn't wake up, and she didn't understand the growing hunger she felt as the hours passed. So since everything was so inexplicable, she only knew how to enter a strange state in which she didn't appear to do herself. She cried all the time without her being able to help it, but without really feeling anything, it seemed as if she was on autopilot. She spent all day in the house and went out at night to wander the streets and stayed up until the wee hours of the morning. No one saw her and if they did, she would pass by. Many even believed that she was a ghost because it was very unlikely that a girl of her age and with such a pitiful appearance would really be out in the street alone so late at night. Moreover, the girl had no expression at all, which was even more frightening. It was only on the third night that a patrol car passed through the neighborhood. From a distance, they thought it was a dog, but were astonished when they realized it was a girl. They watched her for a while, waiting for an adult to come out and pick her up, or for one of the other passers-by to pick her up. At that hour, not many people were passing by, but of the ones that were, no one paid attention to her as if she wasn't really there. In fact, it was such an unusual scene, they even took the time to videotape it for a few minutes before devoting themselves to finding out what was really going on. Joanna had always been so secretive and that area was so crowded that no one really knew if she lived alone with her daughter or if there was someone else. If she worked or where she had come from and they weren't interested either, and Joanna hadn't been interested in anyone in her neighborhood and hadn't noticed them either. That's why when they stopped seeing her they didn't even notice her, much less did it occur to them to think about her daughter. But for police officers, a child wandering alone in the early morning hours cannot go unnoticed much less so one so small and without adult supervision. So they approached her and noticed something really alarming. The little girl's face was completely dirty and full of tears. Something bad had happened to her and they were frightened to think that the little girl had been in that state for a long time without help. So they asked Lucy where she lived and accompanied her to her house. Once there, no one opened the door for them, but the door was unlocked and perhaps that was why the little girl had been coming and going without any trouble. But once they crossed the threshold of the door, they realized that something was really wrong, because there was a strong bad smell. It took them a while to find Joanna's body in her bed, where she'd probably been for at least the past three days. 
Since then, the girl had been in the house without alerting anyone because they probably didn't understand what was happening or she was simply in shock. No one had come to a raid and she had spent three days in that house without eating next to her dead mother and exposed to great trauma. And the police officers didn't even want to imagine what the girl might be feeling. In fact, Lucy really needed help after those events. She was four years old but they wouldn't say anything and no one seemed to bring her out of her reverie. So she had to stay with a child therapist until she was 10 and under special observation until she finally felt like herself again. She had learned to deal with the past and not let it influence her future. And the police officers who had found her had been so shocked by Lucy's situation that they had not abandoned her all this time and continued to keep an eye on her. In fact, it was thanks to them that the 10-year-old Lucy felt she had no one else in the world. They knew this, so they made sure she had a good education and the chance to focus on what interested her most in the future. And even though she was in foster care until she was 18, she always had everything she needed. So when she finally came of age and still had the support of her protectors, Lucy took up what she'd always wanted, baking. She then opened her own store and put so much effort into it, working day and night, that it soon became one of the most sought after places in her area of town. Lucy now had the means to support herself and became an independent and strong woman who had managed to overcome a traumatic childhood and now also tried to support as much as possible the victims of drug abuse as she had been. Her experience became a great example of overcoming for many other minors who had lost their parents in a similar way, because they'd been so difficult for her that she now only sought to relieve others, and the policemen who became basically her parents were always very proud of her. Although Joanna did not live long enough to see what her daughter had become, she surely would be proud. For Joanna, opportunities had come when there was nothing left to do, but Lucy had a bright path ahead of her. She got to do everything her mother had wanted, and although she hadn't been able to give it to her and life had taken it away from her too soon, she always knew that she had tried, that circumstances had overcome her strength, but that she had always loved her, and for that she was always grateful to her and never stopped wishing that wherever Joanna was, she could smile at the sight of her daughter. If you like this story, give it a like, share it with your friends and family, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.